Welcome to Snowplow Alley. Winter in Maine. Long, cold winters and snow, lots of snow. Heavy, deep snow that brought moving about in vehicles to almost a complete standstill in many sections of rural Maine, especially in Arusta County. For years, Mainers took care of snow the old-fashioned way, but moving snow by hand was hard and time-consuming. In the spirit of Yankee ingenuity, the Bangor-based Union Iron Works established a snowplow manufacturing plant in 1827. The owner was a man named Donald Sargent, and they used his last name as the brand name of their plows. Thus, Sargent Snowplows. Advertised as the world's largest producer of snow removal equipment, the company sold Sargent plows throughout New England and as far west as South Dakota for over 100 years. Today, you will see the largest display of snow removal equipment undercover and on public display in the USA here at the Coal Land Transportation Museum. You will see many outstanding examples of snow removal and rolling equipment, like this one. This is a Sargent snow roller. Before many Mainers plowed snow, they rolled it to pack it down. Sometimes as many as eight horses were used to pull this giant machine. But rolling down several thick layers of heavy, icy snow during the long, cold Maine winter created certain problems later on. Where, where they'd roll that snow down with the rollers and you'd run over it all winter, it was so hard that at places they had to use dynamite to break it up. The snow above Myers Hill going to Myers Hill to Easton had been run over all winter and they'd rolled it so they would, when they'd break that out, they got junk as big as a car. Also, some main communities didn't like the way the rollers left the roads in spring. So they invented their own plows in local blacksmith shops. This is a replica of such a plow. It's called a plain plow, so named because it resembles the tool that is used to smooth wood. It has two blades that are raised and lowered. This plow would remove snow from the roadway so it would not build up as it did with a roller. This international snow plow also was made by Sargent. Notice it is a V plow that has two wings. The superstructure permits the international T-40 tractor to drive into it and have the unit attached. Keeping the roads open in northern Maine was my dad, A.J. Alley Cole. He made some history of his own. He was the first to plow the roads north of Lincoln into Aroostook County with his sergeant snow plows in the early 1930s, ahead of the Maine State Department of Transportation. We opened up into Sherman's, Sherman Mills. First time they'd ever seen a snow plow in there. We went in and plowed the town out so they could get out to Woodbridge Corner and get on to Main Drag. That was the goddess of Coles Express. Plowing the roads of rural northern Maine was cold, tough work. Work that challenged the men of Coles Express and their machines. Well, we were hung up about as much as we plowed, to tell you the truth about it. I mean, they were, we were breaking axles, taking out uh, low gears, and rear ends and so forth. And, uh, but nevertheless, spring finally came and, uh, and uh, we took the truck back across the road before the ice went out. Yeah, you talk about tough. We didn't have a place to go under cover even. Everything was outdoors. The great outdoors was our garage and no way to get back to it. It was really rough going. No heat in the trucks. God's sake. And the, uh, and the snow plows, that old hydraulic plow, had three jacks in it, one for the point, one for each wing, and you had to pick them up, jack them, beat the band, so you didn't need a heater. You kept warm jacking them points and wings up and down, I'll tell you. One of our mechanics, a fellow named Mose McNally, we kept losing rear ends. Those big double reduction rear ends weighed over 250 pounds. It was so cold that it uh, below zero much of the time when we had to change those rear ends. And, Mo Moses was a big Swedish boy, and, and 
he could get underneath one of those trucks and put that transmission, that rear end, in his lap and slide it up in there and put it in shape. And how he kept from freezing his hands, he kept the blowtorch running. He just rub his hands in the blowtorch, go back to work. This is a 1933 Model 80 Kleetrak plow. It has tremendous power. It cleared the streets of small main communities during the 30s and 40s. Its thirsty engine consumed four gallons of gasoline per mile, and its top speed was four miles per hour. They kept the roads open to Bridgewater one winter. And then it plugged up, and they couldn't seem to do anything with it. And they come in now with a big 20-ton clee track, and they unloaded them in Myers Hill and went up around Easton and started back down the, to Myers Hill again. And that old tractor would roll the snow right up over the <clears throat> telephone lines. Knowles in honor and memory of her husband. The equipment on display here is a cross-section of the interesting snow removal equipment used in Maine by pioneers to keep the roads open for use all winter from 1900 to the 1950s. Today, as you are able to cruise over Maine highways all winter long with hardly a hitch, we hope this display helps you to think what life in winter would be like without these inventions from Maine's innovative pioneers.